cracking. Cracking and jacking. Oh, oh. You know what? That is cracking. Hold on. Release the cracking. There it is. Hey, man, it's Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, bitch. A week from the scare. It's not two days from the scariest day of the year. It's a week from the scariest day of the year. Hey, I'm Ryan Rusher. That's Jester Robbie Young. What's going on, James? Oh, my God, Brian. It's uh, busy times, dude. Busy times. Everybody's uh, rushing around and giving speeches and talking to voters. And, yeah, uh, uh, you know, there's one particular uh, uh, Texan who spends a lot of her time uh, drinking all day and shitting herself. It's uh, called my daughter. So, uh, have you, yeah. Have you she's, thought about uh, staging an intervention? <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I got to tell you, man, this is a. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to a time that's not now. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot going on. We, we got we got a, a, a world's greatest con episode in in the in in the boiler we got uh uh, the election about to about to bus all over america and Uh, then to to uh, to 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 everything else just just a snapshot of a moment i mean uh ladies and gentlemen national treasure justin robert young is is burning all the candle he's burning other people's candles at both ends yeah Uh, i'm a candle arsonist uh, i i'm burning (laughs) every candle i can and then uh, uh, to the point where we get in, and and by God, I mean, every, 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 I, I I know I am trying to be as supportive as possible and have my shit together. We're like, when it's time to record World's Greatest Con, it's like, okay, pre-set up this, ready for this. We're going to get it. We're going to burn it out, burn it out. Sure enough, we sit down, and it's like uh, we already did the pre-work. We got the script in a way where, where uh, I'm not going to – you know, it won't feel like a tongue twister. You know, it's it's a, it's all Brianized uh, so that Brian can speak extemporaneously. Here we go. Burn it. Page one, section one, record, go. Two, boom, section three, boom, section four, boom, section five. Boy, that was great. We had a lot of things. Just one more to go. Yeah, Brian turns to right. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Justin, yeah. I'm gonna go home (laughs) i have to leave well and i didn't have to leave because of that i had to leave because of again the uh, very specific texan who is uh uh, spending a lot of time sleeping and drinking all day but uh uh, second generation native texan we got uh uh, but then i also spent that night working on the editing for the first the first episode i I swear to god the whole episode isn't because of me us talking about podcasts you can't listen to but like oh that's uh, i'm okay uh, i'm here for it (laughs) I would like to not do that for the sake of the listeners. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it just goes long. It's just it's just a long it's a long process to edit, but it's enjoyable. That I really wanted to do it because I wanted to take my mind off everything else that's going on. But uh, yeah, but then I, we also have this, which is great. But and we should talk about something other than the fact that I'm that I'm stressed. We should okay. talk about literally right. anything else in the let's, planet. Let's talk about something universally approachable. So a week from tonight, no show because of election night. We will be live. We'll be live on my channels. So Justin R. Young on X, uh, politics, 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 on the YouTube, and then uh, Justin R. Young on Twitch. I don't know if we'll be able. I gotta. I gotta email Substack and see whether or not we can RTMP into Substack because they also have a live, uh, a live chat thing, or a live stream thing. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be fucking bananas. It's gonna be bonkers. Uh, we're doing the pinatas, so I gotta go buy pinatas this weekend. <laughs> all right, all right. So I, and I gotta. I'm, we gotta. I gotta. At some point, I gotta come to the puppy and hang pinatas from the the rafters. Uh, I'll I'll have to uh, also have a backup. Uh, 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 knock on Schwood. Uh, Spectrum doesn't try to fuck with us ah. at this hour. Uh, ah, what? Oh, oh, did you? Uh, do, are you bringing a backup? I have instructed Mr. Andrew Heaton, who is coming into town specifically for our event, to bring his Starlink. Oh, hell's yeah! Is it? Is it really just like you throw it out and it's fine? Okay, we're we'll find out. Find out. It's right. better than better than the current plan, which is which gamble is with Spectrum. <laughs> well, uh, I think what we had done previously was set up like. Um, uh, uh, in fact, I bought an iPad just to leave it attached to the router, so that 
remember at the height of the pandemic when yeah. we were doing uh, happy hours and uh, we would have to just flip over and use AT&T te te tethering? I'll tell you what, whatever we need to do, I am I am down uh, down to clown because I would definitely not like to uh, put all the effort into it and have people rely on us for their election night coverage and, and have there be any problems. But it's going to be fucking madness, dude. It's going to be the madness that you guys experienced two years ago. Uh, uh, we're we're going to have four pinatas, each representing one scenario that I have laid out that the night will end in. And as the scenarios fall away, we will break the pinata to symbolize that that scenario is not going to happen. Uh, it's a simple uh, we bit. Are, <laughs> we're going to have a cavalcade of stars, Jen Briney, uh, Andrew Heaton, and uh, uh, any and every PX3 guest that I can reliably at least call on the phone and uh, uh, make them talk about what they think at any given moment. Uh, it's, it's, it's all happening, baby. It's all going down. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a thing. Crazy. No, I'm, I'm super looking forward to it. As soon as we get through this weekend and, you know, it just... Yeah, this is like the last week of content, so I just want to make sure that it's good. Again, all right, let's talk about literally anything other than and, uh, me being stressed. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, who who do you think will win the election? God <laughs> damn it, Brian. What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? I, uh, there's one. You want to know what? You're actually not wrong, though. Because, like, I, I was trying to do the, the, the run sheet for We're Not Wrong, and I'm like, okay, well, we have two political topics that are that are in there. And then I'm like, okay, well, we got to find one silly one. And there's usually some fucking bullshit, like, a robot thought it was a goose. Like, and local officials are furious. Uh, uh, I couldn't find shit. Like, everything is, like, politics in some form or flavor. It is every... You cannot turn your head and not find a political story. Uh yeah, man. Uh, it's like the whole world is on uh, on on tech holiday or everything holiday. It's just like everybody's just like, yeah, okay. Uh, do, are, are you part of the the clan who is seriously considering prepping a little bit for uh, urban tumult on election what? night, riots in the street? I've heard many podcasts like seriously say they they expect riots on election night. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have any in 2020 when we were like actually rioting through the summer. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I don't know. I'm just uh Wait, no, we did have riots in 2020. We had them in 2021. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, I mean on election night, like people are saying that uh, that they're primed to fight. Who? I mean, yeah, yeah. If you want me to go through, I can open up my podcast app and tell you which. No, three no, no. I well, I, I, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. This is just I have not heard this talked about seriously, so I, oh, I yeah. don't know. No, 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 uh, no, no. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've yeah. heard pundits. Uh, uh, I, I've heard multiple pundits. Uh, uh, one saying that they thought that that if Trump is elected. Like, uh, uh, tr there will be riots. And another was saying, if Trump is not elected, there would be riots. I don't think that there would be riots if Trump is... I don't think there would be riots either way, to be totally honest with you. I don't think that, that... Maybe if Trump wins in, like, a landslide and that shit is over in, like, you know... Uh, like, if it's, if it's wrapped by, like, 10 Eastern time... If it's just like, oh, okay, so like North Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania, done, over. AP is calling it, and it's like, okay, well, then that just means it's it's an absolute wrap. And if, if we get like a super early call, then maybe I would see people just being so pissed. But also it's like nobody starts a riot unless it's after a sports game at like, two o'clock in the morning based on a 75% chance that somebody's going to win. So, and then once, once you're out of the initial zone of like booze and adrenaline and everybody's kind of like slowly coming to grips on what will happen in less and less and less, then I think rioting is less likely. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't particularly think that rioting, the possibility for rioting is high. Yeah. Uh, now, 
if Trump wins, would there be riots in certain cities like a week afterward? Like, do we see like a different version of the women's march that ends with like Oakland on fire? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that to oh, me yeah, is more well, likely and, and, than a, than a riot that night. I mean that 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 was also uh, one of one of the scenarios that was talked about was was like uh, <laughs> I don't know, just uh, I don't know. It seems like everyone's on edge, and the uh, I know I'm cheering for one thing. A very clear outcome. I have a feeling that it might be. Yeah. I don't know why. I think it's because the polls are actually close this time, where it's like before the polls have been like really, really like, oh, Democrats going to dominate. Democrats going to dominate but two times in a row, and then it was really close. And now it's like it's the closest election of all time. And I'm like, all right, it's going to be a blowout either way. <laughs> it's going to either be like Kamala wins and it's like running away or it's going to be Trump wins and it's running away just because – I, I, I feel like now, if the polling is right in the middle, then a poll error, which will almost always happen on some level, is going to predict it. Like, that just means that now it's like on one side or the other, it's like a three point victory. Are, are the betting markets still disagreeing with the polls, or did that start to even out? No, pretty much everything points to Trump right now. Okay. Like, uh, uh, the, the betting markets are all on some level Trump, if not Trump by double percentage points, which, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, it's manipulatable. It's like, well, yeah. Well, yes. you know, if, if, if people have a lot of money and they want to put it on it, like they're risking that money because they believe they're going to make money. Uh, if you believe that they are stupid, the way that these prediction markets work, because these prediction markets are not like a, uh, a bet that you would make at a sports book where all the odds are the exact same. Right. These they're are contracts. All, yeah. They're all dollar contracts that you're basically bidding on, but you can buy them at the percentage that they are at right now. So for example, if like Kamala Harris right now is like 32% to win, you're basically buying a dollar at 32 cents and you can buy as many dollars as you want at 32 cents. And you'll make more money if that number is lower. So uh, please, I would encourage everybody, if you if you think these are wrong, then make some cash, dude. It's free money. Yeah. So uh, uh, what else uh, What else is going on in your world? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, the answer is no, it's, nothing. We went through, we just went through everything. It's not a wide docket, dude. It is, it is my daughter, politics, and then just when I say that I am spinning plates with the like barest amount of energy that I have, I am barely running over and like just spinning the plate for a second and then running over to spin another plate. But uh, uh, yeah, no, everybody that is not Bella or politics, politics, politics is getting a about maximum 30 percent of me yeah. this is this is me like at at full fucking like power conserve mode uh, i might as well be a yellow battery icon like that's that's what i am i'm in power conserve yeah uh, 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 uh justin turn on low power mode <laughs> already on it sir yeah uh, all right well we've got uh we got guests in studio who are dressed up hey did you already see uh kyle wells's costume no. Uh, uh, hanging out in studio in, in your spot is uh, one Kyle Wells. There we go. Uh, We're all looking for the person who did this. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you just dress like a hot dog. You're dressed in a hot dog costume. <laughs> uh, and, of course, uh, uh, Nathan is out this week, so we, we've got one uh, Annalisa Martin. Uh, uh, you're dressed as who again? Miss Frizzle. Frizzle, of course. Just pretend it's a chameleon. Uh, okay, well, here, uh, uh, pull that mic a little bit closer to you. There you go. Okay, well, okay. Well, all right. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, good. Um, did, you think Miss Frizzle would be arrested? Probably. Uh, for for what? Uh, for taking the, the kids all that away? crazy shit with the school bus. You think that like the, I mean, you think every parent's super cool with that? Probably not. You know, one of them's gonna try to ban gender queer in the middle of it. <laughs> uh. It sounded like you had a take, Annalisa. <laughs> no, I'm just processing that. Uh, she did make children <laughs> shrink an awful lot. 
Yeah, she's taking these kids. Does she know that that's not going to give them cancer? Is she it, has no is, idea. Is, is, is that this like Frizzle's a menace, dude? Is is that like her version of the Dan Schneider always having kids be spanking each other on on the Disney uh, on, on that documentary? They were just talking about it. Never mind. Yeah, this was a PBS show. <laughs> no, I know, and and this was Disney uh, uh, Disney Channel. Uh, if, if you don't know the documentary that I'm refer referencing, no. either of you guys do. Yeah. No, I saw there was a Nickelodeon one. Uh, a Nickelodeon documentary, documentary about kids acting. Yeah, dude. Anytime you got kids acting, you're gonna have trouble. Stuff with docu that makes documentaries later. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, these kids, man, trouble, you know, tattletales. I mean, there was one episode where the, there, one of the kids was, like, sick or something, so they, they, they went. Did they and, shrink them? <laughs> it's like, you no, know what? Uh, what if you were just a little sick? <laughs> no, they, they And then Miss Frizzle's like, fuck it, this motherfucker's the... spitting. <laughs> yeah, let's take a field trip into the sick kid. That, that's a good idea. Did, yeah. did they do that? Yeah. Did they, uh, uh, what did, what did they do? How did it go? They won. They won? Did they challenge, did they challenge the, the germs to like a rap battle or something? Who do you think Mrs. Frizzle goes home to? Uh, Barack Obama. Do you think that she's like, yeah, like my married to somebody? Life partner? What do you think? I mean, she reads like a crazy cat lady, but, but. But with You think by, by herself? Did you have like one that got away? I don't think they ever talked about her personal life, but her I know that she life. had something like 39 different dresses. Mm. All right, hold on. Let me just Google Miss Frizzle slash fiction. Oh, my God. All right. I'm here. I'm here for wherever this is headed. Slash fic. We'll just see if we can. Uh, Valerie Frizzle. <laughs> Valerie, of course. I mean, what other what other adult characters were on that show? I don't think there were any. <laughs> that's no, going to make some complicated. Well, I mean, I guess like maybe she has an on again, off again with like Abe Lincoln or something. The show was really focused on the kids. Did uh, did the magic school bus time travel? Had to, right? I'm sure it probably did. Yeah. They can't. Um, this isn't there's the one where she's in a suicide costume. squad. What? Yeah, there's a lot of like people keep putting Miss Frizzle in in this uh, in this slash fiction website that I'm on. They keep putting her in like a bunch of compilations, but nobody has the balls to fucking just do a really erotic Miss Frizzle slash fiction. This just this, some. It feels like this is new territory that needs to be pioneered. What would be uh, <laughs> what What is the what? Like, hold on, she didn't solve crimes or anything with her fucking school bus. No, no, not really. She just toured anatomy and the beaches and underwater stuff and sent the kids out in wetsuits that just magically appeared on the bus. Yeah. Okay. How magic was the magic school bus? Like, could it, could it turn fishes and loaves and multiply them and shit? I don't think it was that kind of magic. Okay. It just produced equipment. And it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't transform. God, wouldn't it, that be it, great? So it would transform a little bit because I could have sworn that it like went into space and grew like little fins and little rockets and stuff. And the underwater one, it became kind of a submarine. Um, I, I have to admit, though, I'm just wearing this costume because I have a dress with bugs on it. Um, mm. this is <laughs> a very, that's very, very frizz. That's very frizz. Yeah. There's, here's one on fanfiction.net called Mrs. Frizzle Gets Crunk. Okay. Yep. And she goes to a Lil Wayne concert, but uh, we don't know whether or not she does anything graphically sexual. Well, let's, I, I guess. Wait, is she Miss Frizzle or Mrs. Frizzle? I thought it was Miss. I th I, well, I'd imagine Miss. Miss. No, it's Mrs. It's Mrs. yeah, it's, it's Miss. It's it's not Mrs. Miss yeah, us. it's it's. So yeah, she's like I don't know. She may, maybe she went to she went to Barnard. You know, she like studied English. Maybe the series ended because she got married. Did did she get married? No. It did no. end around the time that Civil Union started. 
Because I get a very strong cape. Uh, I was about to say. Is anybody uh, yeah, else? No, I mean, I I just assumed like she's she's too cool to be straight and safe. Classic lesbian behavior: shrinking children, <laughs> magic buses. Okay. Yeah, this is like this is absolutely textbook lesbian behavior. I just figured she knew where to get the good weed. And had lots of friends. Oh, friend you think Mrs. Miss Frizzo might be like she's like a fish parking lot chick? Maybe, or maybe like, her mother like, was. Like she's like somebody who's gonna like like pet your head if you did too much nitrous. Yes. And she also knows that. Uh, and then she could also cover talk born you through to what's run happening at at the Halloween show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Did maybe did there's that? Yeah, we could go with that. So, all right, we have a couple options for Miss Frizzle. Did, did any of the kids uh, uh, have a character, or were they were just the kids? There's like three kids that everything happened to over and over. There was like the the kid with glasses and frizzy curly hair with the I think it was like a green and white sw striped sweater that like everything happened to him. And then there was like a know it all girl, and then like some other girl that cried all the time. Like, and they just did this, the episodes over those same three kids over it. Like, they were the focus. Oh, yep, the kid with the hat. Okay. But, but like, but like, Brian's did the, playing video. Did the kids... Oh, no, that's, that's Bryce. Rizzle. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, that is Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Brizzle, yeah. Uh, was it always the kid's fault? Uh, no, sometimes you know. the kids would like do something that would further the plot, but it was never really like a, oh, you fucked up. And I don't think that she was like straight mean to the kids, like Mr. Wizard or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, sometimes it was just like, we're going to go learn about this thing today. So we're going to go really immerse ourselves in the, the lesson plan. Yeah. And then, you know, the dipshit with glasses steps in the mitochondria and they have to like pull them out or something like that. Yeah, but it were, there was like very G rated versions of Willy Wonka. Uh, I was about uh, to say, it, it, was, like, it, the does, kids it does doing have a, something stupid. A one, but, but like without the moral judgment of, and the. the yeah, without the withering moral one. judgment of a weird incel who has a <laughs> fucking collection of Aborigines doing his bidding. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, patreon.com slash great night is where you could go for the moment to sign up and support us and you'll be able to get double episodes with the bones. Uh, we post twice a week, sometimes three times a week, uh, other times only once a week. <laughs> patreon.com slash it, 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 it averages night. out. It averages out. <laughs> yes, it does. it does. It does average out. Uh, yeah, you were uh, you sent me a, a, a groaning email about Patreon. Uh, oh, geez, yeah, uh, yeah. You want to read the 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 hot news? Um, I mean, it's no, it's nothing new. It's just that no, we've talked about know it. But... That if you subscribe to a Patreon via Apple, the creators need to decide whether or not they're going to eat the cut, or the subscriber will pay an Apple tax on it. Uh, and then reminding again that per creation things are going to go away next year. Well, well year no, from... I think they, they said it's time. Or yeah, they said 2025. So it's like we're gonna we're about to have to Project make... 2025. Google Project 2025. Uh, Patreon. It's Patreon here. taking away per creation. Here's what it says. <laughs> it says here, uh, Apple's requirements are coming soon. Nice job, dickos, of making it sound like you're just the innocent bystander. Nobody mm -hmm. could have seen this coming. Apple's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Apple's requirements are coming soon. Apple and then, Apple. You know what? After Apple, you know who you should blame? <clears throat> Us, the God. users. No, sorry, we yeah. announced back in August hyperlink passive aggressively to prove that they definitely announced it back in August. We announced back in August that we're requ we're required to use Apple's in-app purchase system uh, in order to remain available on the App Store. Uh, uh, yep. As a result, all creators, are, uh, as a result of Apple's policies, not our policies, not our fucking decision to decide yep. whether or not to, to eat the cost or not. As a result of Apple... Why is Apple hitting us? Why is Apple hitting us? All yeah. creators are required to switch to Patreon's least popular billing model. Why is Apple making me hit you? 
Why is Apple making me hit you? Yep. You're currently a awesome billing creator, which means you have until November 2025 to switch to subscription. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'll get mad about this next year. It'll be fine. Yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. Right. It's fine. Patreon.com slash great night. It'll always be the way you fund this very program. Always. Always and forever. Put it in a locket. Yeah. I'm going to put it in a locket. Patreon and me forever and ever. I mean, a billion years of love. Like, if they're going to delay action for another year, that's so weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. Yeah, because it's almost as if they're arbitrarily moving the fucking deadline around because there's not an actual fucking force that's making them do it. They are doing it themselves. Uh, yeah. Well, in, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, you have to believe that all of the creators are like, cool. Just send another email before you do it so we all know what day to leave. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Patreon. Look at pay. You want to know about Patreon? Beautiful people. Beautiful place. Special teams. Special plays. Special players. Tuesday, Tuesday. I love Patreon. Also, if you add the politics, 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 Patreon, come to Substack because we have a brand new deal. Hot deals coming, coming into the station. 70%. We have we have converted seventy percent, and but I, I want those final stragglers. I'm a, I'm a shepherd, and I need my sheep. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, all right. So even without a Nathan, I believe we have a game. Is that true, Annalisa? It is, in fact, true. Uh, uh, well, tell us all about it. Um. Well, uh, I'm going to give you six words, and you're going to tell me what movie it is. Uh. Okay. So an entire movie in six words. Pretty much. Uh, here, here's the theme for it. <laughs> Got it. All right, ready. Cool. All right. The first one is Deadly Hitchhiker Takes Over. Exterminator Needed. Hmm. Brian, you want to guess first? Deadly. Is it, read it again. Deadly Hitchhiker Takes Over. Exterminator Needed. Okay, so. Dead, deadly Hitchhiker. So somebody, uh, it's a movie where somebody gets in to a thing. De uh, 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 can I get a hint? I can tell you what year it was. Yeah, there you go. What year? 1990. One of those kind of movies. Deadly Hitchhiker takes over is this arachnophobia oh it is a it's also the week of halloween so i'm gonna assume that th these might be a spooky movie i'm gonna say arachnophobia sorry uh, oh. before before it even popped into the chat i had it which was what alien alien wait that wasn't 1990 well, that was 19 maybe i fucked that one up <laughs> <laughs> maybe i done fucked that one up <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What's the answer? The answer is arachnophobia. Yay! Yay! Oh. You and a spider. No, uh. not. <laughs> there we go. Saw. Uh, yeah. Was <laughs> did did that movie scare you, Justin? I don't think I've ever seen arachnophobia. Yeah. I think that was the first like mainstream horror movie I ever saw. Yeah, I, I'll be I'll be totally honest with you. I don't really like horror movies. Yeah, it's it's it it is. I'm I'm kind of a pussy. I'm kind of a real big puss when it comes to horror movies, man. I don't like them. I never liked them. They're just not my thing. You don't like I have a lot of scared? friends that love them, but I I just can't be me. Well, this one was also supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> yeah, arachnophobia was yeah that was a little silly. Uh, well, jo John Goodman was in it as the actual exterminator. So. Yeah. Um, does he do serious movies? Yeah. Yes. Doesn't he? Okay. Uh, pretty pretty oh, sure. He was in uh, the, the, the Cloverfield one, right? Oh, was that he? Was serious. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was a bad guy on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, 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 he was in the documentary, The Big Lebowski, uh, the, uh, yes. the hymnal, Oh Brother, Where Out Thou? Where, oh. where, where Out Thou? <laughs> Hymnal, definitely, yeah. All right, question two. Well, phrase two. Escaped troll 
turns dog to log. Justin, you want to go first this time? Justin, you're going first this time. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to say it's the classic leprechaun. Leprechaun. Hey, the leprechaun. Hey, well, yes. What was the uh, what was the clue? Come find my pot of gold. I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> where? Hey. Yo, where's where Jennifer oh, Aniston at? Leprechaun Not appearing in this movie. I. She was in one of the leprechauns. That was her first movie. Right. Escaped troll turns dog to log. Dog to log. So somebody mm-hmm. gives a boner to a dog. No. Escaped troll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Escaped troll. What year? What year? 1991. Shit, it's definitely leprechaun. I fucking nailed it. Yeah, I'll say. I can't think of anything else. It wasn't Leprechaun in the Hood. That no. was later. No, oh, yeah. I can tell you that Eartha Kitt was in it. If we're Eartha Kitt in Leprechaun. <laughs> where, where, where are my Eartha Kitt fans at? <laughs> hey, she's been in a lot of stuff. I know. Uh, I hear the name. So you're, you you both answer Leprechaun? Uh, Well, yes, but only because I'm tagging along. Oh, okay. All right. Also, I'm gonna have to not look in the webcam because uh, uh, among your excellent talents, Anna Lisa, a poker face is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, like I see this ray of blinding sunshine off to my left the moment Justin says uh, uh, "leprechaun," and I realize it's your dazzling smile. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't know what that means. Okay. All right. <laughs> Because you're both wrong. What? Damn. Ernest scared stupid. Oh, shit. <laughs> Have what? either of you even seen movies. that? What are these movies? What is scared stupid? Uh, uh, that, so- that, that, that was his, uh, uh, his, hol- his, his Halloween one. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody see that? I didn't see that one. I think I only watched one other oh. Ernest, but I did own. Oh, fuck you. Oh, Kobo. I've definitely seen this movie. I loved the Ernest movies. I haven't seen all of them. I need to. So if somebody had like a boxed set of them, tell me. Jim Varney, This isn't man. the one where yeah. he becomes Electro Man. No, that was when he goes to prison. He becomes er- Yeah, Electro Ernest goes man. to jail. Yeah. Yeah, Ernest goes I ha- to jail. There's an awful lot of Ernest jokes and humor in my childhood, but I don't remember actually watching the movies. Know what I mean, Vern? Yeah. That's wait, wait, the one, he, yes. He, he would do... Uh, I always thought he was a local Houston guy because he would do – Jim Barney would do that character, or Ernest P. Worrell, uh, as uh, – he would do the local NBC affiliate news ads. Uh, and he full on would, would, would clown around with the uh, anchors on the street yeah. or whatever. Uh, but then I – and I was confused when it was a nationwide phenomenon. I was like, did our local boy do good or whatever? But then uh, I think I found out that he did several local markets with that character – uh, as he workshop, I have no idea. I would love of all the shit that needs a documentary. I need a Ernest goes to documentary. I, I, That's what I need. Jim Varney, man, uh, uh, is very very funny, and and watching him do thoughtful interviews out of characters is, is really fascinating. Uh, he was also the ca- the Slinky Dog from Toy Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was a kid. I had the Ernest P. Whirl Book of Knowledge, which I need to find. Uh, uh, I think there were actual. Uh, it was. It was. It, 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 yeah, something about being like in seventh grade. It's all Mad Magazine and Ernest P. Whirl. Yep, Damn. That, that track. All right. So what? A troll turned a dog into a log during in that movie? Yeah. W- w- is that a metaphor? Or that just happened. How that much does happens. Nathan think we fucking remember about? That Ernest one wasn't movies. from him. <laughs> that was not from him. No. All right. No, th- three of these, I don't know who did them, and the other three are from me. All right, all right. Okay. After the fact that the was it was that one from you, or is that a stranger? That was me. Okay. How much well, do you think we know about the Ernest movies? How much does anyone remember these movies? Uh, you guys have an awful lot of niche knowledge, so yeah, we do. That's shot. true. You want to know what? Yeah, I, I'll take the L on that. Like, cause there'd be some like random. 
Final Fantasy line that Brian and I would talk about for 30 minutes and everyone else would be confused. So I understand. Maybe you it was a it was a worthy guess to assume just by the time frame that Brian and I both might have encyclopedic knowledge of Ernest I P. Mean, Worrell's to, scared. To, to, to be stupid. honest, you you missed it by only two and a half years or so of uh on my end. Hey, uh, uh here's the real test. Do you know the current score? I do. What is mm-hmm. it? Brian won, Justin Zero. Oh. Damn, man. Nothing's been the same since I called Miss Frizzle a lesbian. It's what you get. That I just know, happened. I know. I know. I went out of pocket. Miss Frizzle's going <laughs> to shrink my child. <laughs> Yo, she would be an amazing oncologist. Why is she using her... <laughs> <laughs> her skills to transport children around. Wait a minute. When does Miss Frizzle go into public domain and I can make a horror <laughs> movie about her? Miss <laughs> Frizzle with Osmosis Jones. That would be such a great team. Osmosis mm. Jones, yeah. yeah. All right. Next That question. was a great movie, Osmosis Jones. Uh, Chris uh, Rock, right? The- uh, yeah. Well, also, the, uh, the Ferrelli brothers directed all the live action version the all the live action scenes in oh it. Uh, uh these and are the um uh what, did they do dumb and dumber they they did yeah. something about mary yeah. yeah and so it was bill murray and i forget who else is like the body that uh that the plot is happening in but there's a line in that movie where bill murray is like well you know what they say starve the cold drown the flu and they cans him a beer that has become lore in, in my friend group where oh, whenever great. like a beer is being dragged, you're like, you know what they say, starve a cold, drown the flu. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mental image of Bill Murray's character and that, uh, that freaks me out every time I get sick. Cause I'm like, am I going to look like that? <laughs> is he like all, that's right. He's a, he's like he's, a disease vector, right? Yeah. He's got some crazy, unknown cold type of thing that's just and of course he's like going everywhere and doing everything and talking to everybody and getting all his spittle everywhere yeah gross Mm -hmm. all right next question well next phrase x seeks immortality is wholly disappointed x seeks immortality is holy is h-o-l-y how's holy spelled how i said it okay all right all right is wholly disappointed x seeks salvation immortality oh seeks immortality Mm -hmm. read it again x seeks immortality is wholly disappointed what what year 92 I know it. I know it. And I know what pun you are making. Uh, and mm-hmm. I know I worked at the movie theater when it was there. And I know mm. it's now a musical. And I know it's Death Becomes Her. With Bruce oh, Willis. Oh, damn. That is that movie. Yep. That's the... I uh, saw it. I saw it played uh, uh, the other day at, a, at uh, the St. Elmo Brewery. They were just playing it on their screen or it was on the television, whatever channel that they had on. Uh, uh, and they made prime um, Bruce Willis look ugly. And I, I remember being struck that I don't remember Bruce Willis being made to look like nerdy and ugly yeah. in that movie. Then they have like old man, they had old man Bruce Willis at the funeral where it's like, he went yeah. on to be great and kind and good once he got bad influences out of his life. There was a tweet I saw where it was two gay people talking and they're like, do you know that Death Becomes Her is a camp gay classic? And the other gay guy goes like, yes, it's a sh- it's a movie about vanity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's correct. Uh, all right. Wait, 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 next one. Uh, wait, was it right? Yep. That yeah. was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be really- great if it wasn't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me pun all over it. All right. Next one. Resurrected rock musician avenges fiance's murder. Resurrected rock musician avenges fiance's. Wait, so he comes back from the dead. Uh, I feel, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's cheating to ask for the year, but I'm going to ask for the year. 
Um, it is 1994, and also we are letting Justin answer first on this one. Yeah. Say it again. Resurrected rock musician avenges fiancé's murder. 1994. Is it The Crow? That would have been the right time. It, yeah, that would be the right time. But... And he is a resurrected rock musician. It's got to be The Crow. I'm going to say it's The Crow. Well, you say correct. That was The Crow. Yeah! yeah. All the time. Uh, nicely done. The Crow was, uh, 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 man, Bruce Lee, some bad luck. <laughs> he had Bruce bad Lee's luck even Brandon after Lee. he was dead. Yeah. You know, he had inherited bad luck. Yeah, that one was crazy. And people still dress like The Crow. People are really into The Crow. And I, they I keep I, trying to remake it, and it's like, and then they realize, like, oh, the movie wasn't really all that good. <laughs> Just, like, a really cool poster and character design. And like, it wasn't, like, nobody remembers cool scenes from The Crow. They just remember the fact that The Crow looked awesome. That, there was the gasoline in the shape of a crow. That that I remember. Dancing yeah. on the table with guns. Oh. Yeah. 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 But yeah, they, I think they've, they've tried to remake it like three times, and every time it's like it just fucking. Did the latest size. remake actually come out yet? Uh, I think it did. I think it came and went. I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have watched that. I was definitely into that whole thing when I uh, in, in the nineties. Yeah, so. I'm digging the nineties vibes on this one. Uh, I'm sad that Nathan's not here for us to taunt with nineties knowledge. <laughs> I made a uh, Frasier reference on the Blaze News Tonight last night. Yeah? <laughs> did you? And did, yeah, did anybody had, get it? The Blaze has been having me on more more often. And so uh, I they were talking about I was I, I said that something that there was a political argument that I argued was like a Frasier word in that like it's it's something that like Frasier and Niles would be talking about, and then they'd cut to the dad who's just like watching football and doesn't care, and that's like you know, a way to say that something is too over intellectualized. And they said, Oh, well, thank you for the 90s reference. And I said, Well, toss salad and scrambled eggs to you. <laughs> uh, what does that even mean? Kenan and I have been rewatching Frasier, and I, I keep meaning to look up like, Oh, what? because he's a shrink. Uh, uh, like, uh, tossed salad and scrambled eggs. Yeah. Like, like their like brains, brains are all brains? messed up. Yeah. I think so. That's, that's what I always uh, thought. Okay. We could, we could, we could look it up. I or we could just hoping, develop our own lore. Yeah. Our head cannon. It was like their shorthand for rich people brunch or something like that. Yeah. The, I, all I know about that song is a, a quote that I read. I don't even know if it's fucking real, but it's real in my heart. Was <laughs> the, could the, be that he really eats ass. That, that's, that could be what it is. Is Frazier eats ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's key to his character. Ever since cheers. Uh, so I, I read something. Well, here, you guys filibuster. Let me see if I can All right, find that's this. fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, the blues are calling as a reference to his radio show, uh, okay. Toss Salad and Scrambled Eggs. Uh, I think that those were the types of crazy people they were calling him. Uh, he doesn't know what to do with them. He uh, doesn't know what to do with. I would have brunch, honestly, because that sounds like brunch. <laughs> it's about are you sure it's not a song about Frazier's failed relationship with Miss Frizzle <laughs> like <laughs> they just couldn't work it out she he was a shrink she kept shrinking things <laughs> the that's two. gotta be it <laughs> you know what that that's going to that's going to the official wiki <laughs> all right so here hold on let me let me see if this is a, the story I've not read the whole thing but uh uh apparently this is Bruce Miller who has done television music forever. And he's being quoted as saying, having been the composer of a show called Wings, I was asked by the creators of that show to come up with a song for their next effort uh, and to submit three uh, things, blah, blah, blah. So I wrote, uh, I was told to have it uh, electric and jazzy, but to avoid any direct references to specific subject matter. So it was necessary to stay away from words about psychiatry, radio shows, the name Frasier, or anything else directly involving any aspect of the show. So he writes the song, Toss salad and scrambled eggs, blah, 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 blah. Apparently it is supposed to evoke the patience of uh, Fraser Crane. Uh, okay. 
But then Fraser does leave the building. What? Okay, so when I first wrote the song, I instantly thought of the great jazz singer Mel Torme. Yeah. He would have been perfect. But the producers wanted me to try Kelsey, and of course, he really made it his own. (laughs) 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 Fuck you, Fraser. (laughs) I just love, I love the idea that he's like, he's like, holy shit, I've been handed this impossible task. I have to write a theme song that has no mention of anything that happens in the uh, in the thing and he's so proud of it and it's awesome and he's like this is great let me call mel i'll get mel in the booth we could have it done by <laughs> wednesday this is going to be great you're going to have that iconic television theme song and he's like well kelsey wants to try <laughs> baby i hear the booze are calling <laughs> salad and scr- yeah um, <laughs> no mention of the show until he says fraser has left the building at the end because he has to because he's because he's kelsey grammar because he's fraser crane Wait, what, 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 yeah. The very end of the the very end of the theme song at the end. Yeah. What? What? Uh. Uh. Yes. Why does he have to though? Like, is, that that's an Elvis reference, isn't it? Uh. Yes. Also, the song wasn't supposed to have any mention of Frasier in it. Oh, got it. Yeah. So he's being a jerk. Couldn't got help it. it. Yeah. So hey, hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Uh, refers to patients with troubles calling into the radio show. This is from the creator. Uh, toss salads and scrambled eggs, but maybe I seem a bit confused. Uh, Frazier's mm. personality was a bit. Maybe, <laughs> but I got you pegged. Uh, maybe, but I got you pegged. Frazier does understand that these people and does help them, but I don't know what to do with these toss salads and scrambled eggs. It's a tough business. Got to deal with these crazies every day. They're calling again. Uh-oh. That should be self-explanatory since he runs a call-in show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th- then he throws his name in there. Man. Yeah, then, then he, goes, he then Frazier, goes baby. <laughs> the whole point of this is moot. <laughs> it's me. All right, wait, me, uh, well, Kelsey Grammer. Well, I play Beast in a few years. Exactly. You can find me in a Fox uh, online direct series describing the American Revolution. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, I, I like to drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> Tapping out. Tapping out. I'm Kelsey Grammer. Oh, I, 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 I fell off the stage once. Oh, find a new Kelsey Grammer fact. Oh, uh, oh, um, I was a Shakespearean actor. I lost the game. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. Uh, what's the score? Um, well, you two, <laughs> Brian, you're still ahead simply because you two keep both getting the right answer. Okay. This was too easy. Mm. No, no. I mean, we keep going. Wait, how many more are left? I've only got two left. Okay. But there is a prize. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to show off the prize. Oh, we got a prize. Now, don't get too excited because all this time, Nathan has been finding you nice little treats and fun things for the winner. Uh, this time, the loser gets a trick, and that trick is pickle-flavored cotton candy. Oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna try real hard. <laughs> well, you are ahead because you have one point of your own. Uh, here, real quick, before we finish this, I, I I'm so glad that this. That this happened because while you were uh, there was a brief pause and I was able to notice all the the skeletons that are decorating your part of the set, uh, which made me think of the little critters. I was trying to figure out which critters those were, which made me think of how we've been playing Pokemon uh, and collecting critters on our critter cam in the back of the property. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we so far have found out that underneath. Bonnie's murder shed is a possum. Yay. Uh, oh. We found, uh, uh, you know, squirrels here or there. Mm-hmm. We collected, uh, we saw two foxes. And today I thought, I was like, I think we've seen all of them. Oh, no, we haven't seen a skunk yet, but we did see a raccoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, At one uh, point there were five baby raccoons living under the shop. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, the But, but uh, yesterday I thought... We got another fox, but then I'm like, 
But then we got like a full on him looking at the camera. And I'm like, I, I'm not sure that's a fox. And so I said, hey, Siri, search the Internet for images of a coyote. And who oh boy, we definitely have a sauntering coyote. Uh, a, a daylight. We have a daywalker coyote. And, Damn. Uh, uh, it's that time of year. That time Yo. of year. What do you mean? Tarantulas and coyotes. Well, I mean, we already had a tarantula, a tarantula in my, in my office. office. I don't want it for a coyote in my office. <laughs> well, just keep the door shut and locked. Well, well, so Bonnie's question was like, does she have to worry about a coyote? I'm like, I'm pretty sure if there's just one, then you're fine. I'm like, but if there are more than one, then they don't exactly announce that they're, well, I guess it's they like, do announce they're a group. If it's like lurching around in the daylight, probably stay away from it. Well, it was like, it was like at 540, so an hour until sundown. Yeah, that's that's not such a, that's not quite such a big deal. Yeah, it wasn't, it, it didn't seem to have rabies vibes, but mm, rabies vibes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Rabies vibes. I, I don't want to see your rabies vibes. Yeah, me neither. Do, what, what, so what what does one do if you encounter a coyote? Um, I think there's two schools of thought. One of them is don't engage with it, but be still and just do whatever you're doing and keep an eye on it till it loses interest and goes away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All or, right. Uh, what most people probably end up doing is uh, keep running making, until you run through make, the hole that it put in the wall. And then when it tries to follow you through the hole in the wall, it hits the wall yes, because that, it's that just is the, the that hole is the that he put on the wall. <laughs> no, you make a whole lot of noise and try to scare it off and be and like make um, yourself look big. So it's like, oh, maybe I don't want to tangle with that big thing. Yeah, but, but they, they ain't going to jump out and try to, I mean, they may If eat there's pippy. more than one, maybe they're stalking you. But if it's really just one, they're probably just, you know, out for scared. a- Scared. Maybe. Yeah. Out for a patrol. Yeah, I've, I'll have to find the pictures rats. of that. Yeah. Because, you know, it's going to look like this. But inside, it's really going to be like, fuck, man. Fuck. God damn it. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. God damn it. I'm out alone. Fuck. This is the shittiest day of my fucking coyote life. This sucks shit. Fuck. God damn it. Fuck. That's what it's saying. But it, outside, it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's in, it's thinking like, man, that big old hairless critter is making weird noises at me. Like, oh God, this Shaking fucking thing again. Me. It's like a weird baby. <laughs> oh, why is it a weird baby again? I was, I'm alone. I'm alone. It's like, fuck it? God, this sucks shit. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. That's exactly what happens. That's exactly what coyotes are thinking. Mm -hmm. I think so. <sighs> All right, do we have another one? <laughs> We've got two more. All right, let's go. All right. Outlaws seek refuge at Deadly Strip Bar. Oh, yeah, I know yeah, that one. Yeah, this one's Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, Dust Till Dawn. <sighs> don't I'll even need to you. movies. Yeah. All right, Yeah, why don't you just say Cheech Marin screams about pussy? <laughs> yeah. Like that one. Uh, I think this one, I, that one may have been uh, constructed by uh, Chatty G. So Whoa, hold on. Dr. Cal, uh, Dr. Calhoun, PhD, in the chat says that Wikipedia says there have been two human fatalities attributed to coyotes, dot, 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 ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. I wonder if that counts the dingo that ate the baby in Australia. Which apparently did happen. I she know. was proven right. It was just a few years ago that I found out that that was a real thing. I always thought that was just like a saying, an urban legend. No. Well, that's the... Uh, uh, My Australian friends were very um, irritated with me because I wasn't taking it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's apparently uh, like... A, well, I mean... Apparently, it's apparently a tragedy that a baby got eaten by a dingo. Well, we've got apparently. Jessica in the well. You got what? Yeah, yeah Jess, was baby little, little baby Jessica, Jessica yeah. was that in the well? That was real. She, yeah, well, she got out though. Yeah. What's she like? But nowadays? then she was eaten by a dingo. A lot of people don't know that. You think she's a stand-up comedian? Yep, I that'd think be so. amazing. How old? Did you ever get left in the well? <laughs> when was that? Because she's. She's like my age or a little older than me, I think. Yeah, I guess. Like two or three or something. And I re that's one of the very first news stories that I remember. Yeah, we'll find out. 
Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I remember that I was like absolutely terrified of wells and there's a well on my parents' property. And even though... It- I don't want to freak you out. There are wells <laughs> everywhere where you least expect them. <laughs> Kyle Wells. That's it. Uh, <laughs> that's, so that's Jessica McClure right now. of Midland, Texas is currently 38 years old. Oh. She is married with two children. Oh. She appearing nightly at the Chuckle Hut? Yeah. She does uh, a little uh, medley and then uh, a very tasteful uh, floor dance. All right. So we're... Uh, we're oh, oh. We're, we're down yeah, to last one. Do, yeah. Do you want more information on little baby Jessica? No, I think I think we're good. I think no, I think we're, we're good. Do, we're going to do the last one. <sighs> Interconnected stories reveal crimes, chaotic consequences. What? Hold on. For reals? <laughs> yes. This, I think this one, I, it, unless somebody wants to, to claim this one, I think this one might have been a chat GPT one. Well... I mean, I assume it's you just described Pulp Fiction. What year is it? <laughs> Dang it! Oh, okay. I mean, it's like I'm you, not even a bother with a poker face for that one. What, what, you, you know, Justin goes to sleep to that every single night. I didn't. It's true. Yeah. No, it's it's a doctor's thing. They just uh, they told me that I had to do it. <laughs> doctors uh, were like, uh, "Hey, do Hell's me a favor. Please indulge your 13 year old." Uh, uh, moment when you saw Pulp Fiction every night and I said fucking really quacks and then I did it but uh, my skin cleared up so it's good good for that <laughs> the, uh, and, and then the last thing the doctor did was shrink me for some reason very yeah, weird and then Miss Frizzle came in and said uh, <laughs> do you want to see what a uh, cell wall looks like and then me oh and gosh. several other children fell into it and then got out it was very you know, it, it advanced the plot, but it wasn't really harmful. <laughs> like, do you uh, have any small cuts or abrasions? Because that's how they got in. Yep. Uh, Annalisa, mm-hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, how, how, how can people help make a game? Uh, you can go, to, I think it's bit.ly slash night attack. Maybe somebody who is a mod or somebody can pop the link into the chat. No, uh, I'll tell you what, man. I, I, I do want to give like a, uh, an hour beforehand, we did not know whether or not uh, Annalisa would be stepping up and, and subbing for Nathan. But you did a fantastic job. That was good. Thanks! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... There's only one that had a definitive right answer and a wrong answer. So, Justin, the pickled cotton candy is waiting for you. Yeah! Hell yeah! I'm going to eat all of it. Um, num, 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 num. All in my, <laughs> all in my gobbin maw. <laughs> you gobbin maw. You gobbin maw. I'm sure you'll get yeah. over here as fast as possible to pick this up. You're very excited Lickety about Lickety split. It. Well, I will be there next week uh, uh, mm-hmm. because we are doing our big election special, friends. Finally, the pressure is released. Four years of buildup comes down to this seven swing states swinging as hard as they can and you won't believe what happens when we give them the camera <laughs> uh, uh hold on I, I forgot there was a couple of things on elisa she she demanded payment what what were they <laughs> well so okay the first thing uh kyle has a present kyle has a present uh uh, uh yeah see if that mic works no it doesn't do you, you want to hold it up and you, I'll just You just shout, and, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Ju- we're gonna, Justin, we're going to play What is Justin Seeing on the Monitor? All right. That's where you describe. It is a oh. pink shirt with a jar jar on it, and it just says, "Excuse me. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. How recent is that? Oh, okay. All right. So, so it's currently in print. Uh, they, oh, that's amazing. It looks like it's Fucking official. Phenomenal. Official merch too. Well, anybody can print a logo. I uh, know. No. Well, I mean, probably not a Star Wars brand logo. <laughs> yeah. Have oh no no no. Amazon yeah, that lately? is that is official Star Wars merch. They they know where their bread is buttered. All they right. don't give a fuck. 
They were all, it was like, yeah, but I'm wearing it ironically. You're like, we don't care. We're unironically spending your money. <laughs> yeah, cost just the same dipshit. It's me, super cool George Lucas. Fucking buy my slop. I don't give a fuck. Did you know this was about Newt Gingrich? I don't give a shit no more, dog. Oh, I'm fucking super cool George Lucas, and I do what I want. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you very much, Kyle. That that is awesome. Uh, I got one more. Annalisa, you got a plug as well. Right? I do. Um, if if you've been around for a while, you may recall a uh, writer, John Francois Dubow, J. F. Dubow, has written a couple of books that we're pretty big mm -hmm. fans of. Uh, there, there's the Life Engineered with the robots, and then there's God yep. and Shed. Uh, he he's dabbled in the horror, and for the past couple of years. He and my dear friend Amy Frost have been working on a project called Ake Willow. Uh, it's a storytelling podcast that's been around for oh a minute. It's seven. Yeah, it's they're seven seasons in, and this month they're trying to make it into an actual printed book. They're doing it through Ink Whoa. Shares. How, how, how close are they at this point? Where, well, where should people go? That's the first thing. Akewillow.com slash book. Okay, A C H E. Mm hmm. W I L L O W. Okay. Even there you though go. there's no such thing as an ache willow. Uh, uh, but not until we all buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like 10 bucks for one copy, and you can do a thing where you buy three for 60 and you get like perks and you get a citizenship card for ache, the city of ache willow. Um, so the, uh, it's, there's seven seasons in of their audio podcast. Each season has 15 episodes, and there's a couple of special ones. So if you have any kind of interest in, uh, it's I, I'd say it's cozy horror or light horror. There's a little bit of description of horrible things, but there's more description of the food, which is right up my alley. Um, so it's described as part Twin Peaks, part Practical Magic. Aquil is a story about coffee, magic, baking, and demons. Join Miriam Dufour as she navigates the quirky and not so quiet town of Ake Willow, where your coffee comes from a steampunk monstrosity with an attitude problem, and the macarons might bite back. Love sick ghosts and starving demons? Just another Tuesday in Ake Willow. So the campaign actually ends on Halloween. And they still got a couple of hundred to go. Like they're, I think they they hit the milestone of five hundred. Yeah, uh, they're 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 at five forty. They're at five forty. Yeah. So they got they got uh looks like a hundred uh right around two hundred to go. Yeah. So so it's a sprint at the end. So if you're the type of person who really just likes to swoop in at the last minute and save the day, this is the project for you to support. Uh, heck yeah, dude. Because once they get the one printed, then it'll be a lot easier that for them to get the rest of them printed. But they got to get through this first milestone, and they've been doing all of this for free. They've got a small uh, Patreon and small Kofi, but that doesn't cover publishing. So they're trying to make a really, really big move here. So if you can support them, that would be awesome. Aquilla.com slash book. Heck yeah. I will be doing that post-haste. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Uh, so... One last thought, wait, wait, uh, Justin, I, 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 is it even like the election happens and then you're set free? Like in jail, there's like you're definitely set free. But like, d are you free after election day? Well, it really depends on how that goes now, doesn't it? Uh, uh, no, I mean, you know, there's there's probably going to be. There will at least be a different version of it that will be a little bit more on a rail. Like, like uh, let's assume that we have a winner either on or within 48 hours of election night, which I hope we do. Then at that point, we now kind of begin the like immediate postmortems and then build up. Like everybody kind of takes a break until next year when you begin the like you know, uh, uh, swearing in and the first 100 days and, and everything that goes along with that. So uh, I would say the, the level of fervor that is happening now 
much of this is my own making because we switched to Substack, and there's also another kind of added layer of of pressure on top of it. But uh, uh, that will be relieved on some level on uh, uh, next week. All right. Well, make sure to join us uh, one more time. It's uh, uh, Justin R. Young on on X, and what was the other? Uh, politics. Oh politics, yeah. Politics. Uh, uh, oh, politics, politics, politics on YouTube and Justin R. Young on Twitch. Anywhere that you've ever watched me live is where we will be, and it will be myself, Brian Brushwood, uh, Andrew Heaton, Jen Briney. We've had some some offers from a few other people, but we will keep them a surprise. A cavalcade of stars joins us next week as we do our number one election coverage. And I'll, I'll tell you what, if you want something that is as smart as it is stupid. And I mean that it's going to be really fucking smart. Like I'm going to tell you shit that will like, I think I've called States. I called Florida last time before CNN fucking like hours before I saw, I saw one return from Broward County and I knew exactly how Florida was going to go. Like, uh, 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 it's going to be really good. And, it's going to be very silly. We're going to do we're going to do some silly stuff. So it's going to be a good time. Right on, man. Uh what well, oh shoot. I should have been starting the lullaby underneath that. That's fine. No worries. Uh um, oh, we will we will start uh, an hour before polls close on the East Coast. Oh, that's when no, we will start. So I believe that uh, is through. Is probably 6 6:30. Uh, is there so uh, awesome. Okay. Oh. Oh, no, start it again. Ah, I'm talking it. Here, just play them all. Play, play them all. Oh, it's been oh, a great night. There we go. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. Happy holidays. It was perfect. Good job. Good job.